Hey viewers, today I'm going to show you how to fix a sticky free hub on a bike wheel with a cassette. Let me show you what I mean by sticky. If I pedal it forward here, and then I stop, notice how the cassette will start uh, turning again, and the, the, the cranks are turning, the chain's turning here. It shouldn't do that. It should just go nice and smoothly here. If I stop it again, it'll start turning again. Um, the free hub in there is just gunked up. I actually took the cassette off earlier and turned it and you can actually feel that it's kind of gunked up in there. Uh, it's not gritty or anything. You don't get the kind of crunchy feel like bearings are destroyed or anything. It just feels like the grease is just really congealed in there. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. The first thing I want to do is remove the bike wheel from the bike. Now I want to remove the uh, skewer from the wheel. Like that. And now I just put the cap back on here because I don't like to lose the uh, spring. Now I want to remove the cassette. So I'm going to use my cassette uh, lock ring remover tool here. Slide that on. And I'm going to need a uh, chain whip to keep the cassette from turning. So I'll get this on here like this. And then I'm going to use just a ratchet wrench with a, a one inch socket here. And uh, let me see what I need to do this, uh, this here. Those just fit uh, right onto a uh, park tool. So then I'll loosen that. Now, once I get it broken loose, then I can just remove the, the, uh, the lock ring nice and easily. And when I get that loosened, I can just lift the cassette off like that. And there's a free hub. And as I turn it, I can feel it it's doesn't turn as freely as it should. It just kind of feels gunked up in there. So I have the wheel here turned over with the uh, non-drive side up. And I need to remove uh, the axle in order to get the free hub off. And what I want to do first is I can either measure how much of the axle sticks out of uh past the, uh, the little lock nut here, or you can actually count like the number of uh, threads on there. So let me see. Looks like about five or six uh, threads stick past beyond there. So I'm going to use a uh, cone wrench here. This is a 15 millimeter cone wrench. And I'm going to remove this lock nut here. that pull all these little spacers off and you want to keep track of the order that these spacers were on there and which side of the axle they went on so that when you go to put them back on you can put them back on in the same order then I'm going to lock a wrench on to the other side and then I want to remove this cone There's the cone. I'll set that over there. Now I'm going to flip the wheel back over to the other side. At this point, I can go ahead and remove the axle. And I'm set this to the side. And the bearings fell out of the other side, which is fine. Don't lose them. If the bearings are in good, good condition, go ahead and reuse them. But generally, I just replace the bearings because uh, they're not expensive and then you'll have nice fresh bearings and while you're in there might as well. Now I need to remove the free hub from the wheel and to do this I'm going to use a 10 millimeter Allen wrench. Um, on some other free hubs it might be a larger Allen wrench. On this one it's a 10 millimeter and so I'm just going to put this in here and then this may be tight and on some other free hubs, you might need to actually come in from the other side of the wheel. But on this one, I can do like this. And this may or may not be tight. I may or may need a cheater bar. Yep. But nope, it's not that tight. So I'll just hit unscrew this. Like this. And I can lift it off like that. Now there's bearings inside of here. I need to remove these. So, and... Ooh, these are a little on the kind of sticky side here. And are they going to come out? Hmm. 
lot of times you can just pop them out. Oh, there they come. Pop them out. You always just reach in and grab them with some uh, needle nose pliers like that. Okay, so now that I have all those bearings out of there, I can push this part out of there as well. Now I need to remove all the uh, grease and gunk from inside the free hub. On a lot of free hubs there's a little plastic ring that's around in here and you could use like a small awl scribe here to like pop that out. But on this one, this one doesn't seem to have one so that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak this in a jar of mineral spirits. Just put that in there and let that soak for a while. And then occasionally what I'm going to do is pull it out work the mechanism a little bit to kind of help free it up and even right now I can feel it it's already starting to free up a little and then soak that in there I want to try to get rid of all the old grease and oil and gunk out of there and so this just leave it soak for uh, a while and occasionally pull it out and turn it around and get all that stuff loosened up from inside there. After you've soaked the uh, free hub for a while and you've worked it and it should be turning pretty smoothly at this point. Uh, you want to let it fully dry out. You can even blow some compressed air or just blow in the in through like the little gaps in there and try to get all the uh, mineral spirits out of there and get it as dry as possible. Now we need to re-lubricate the thing and so I'm going to use Phil Tenacious Oil. Uh, this is a really good oil for uh, hubs and what I want to do is just drip it down in to the gap here uh, bet between like the inner part and the outer part like as you can see how this is turning the inside part turns and the outside part doesn't so what I want to do is try to drip oil in down through that crack like that and just let it uh, drip down inside there and I'm going to need to be working the mechanism to, to let it help flow down in there. I want to get the oil fully worked down inside the mechanism. Hopefully to the point where it's coming out through the other side. Now once you've got the oil worked well down in there it should be uh, a little bit quieter than it was before and hopefully you'll see a little bit of oil have come out through uh, the inside there meaning you've worked it all the way down into the uh, lower bearings there. Now I need to reinstall the free hub onto the wheel so I've got these like little uh, parts in here that'll mesh up there so I just set that on there. I've got this little part that came from the inside there so I'll just drop that down in there and I've got my 10 millimeter Allen wrench, so I'm going to screw this in like that and then tighten it in and I want to try to tighten it in as tight as it was before. Like that. Now I need to replace the bearings that came out of the uh, free hub here that th those are actually uh, bearings for the axle and so here's one of the bearings that came out and I got my uh, park tool bearing gauge here and so it's they're not 730 seconds and they're quarter inch bearings so I have some brand new quarter inch bearings and there were nine bearings that came out of here and there were also nine bearings that came out of the other side of the wheel so I'm going to replace those I need to get some uh, grease into the race where the bearings will go. Um, my preferred grease for uh, bike hubs is marine grease. That may change. It's changed over time. So I'm going to use my little uh, Dualco uh, grease gun here to squirt some grease into the race. And I want enough grease that it's going to hold the bearings in place and then there should be like nine bearings to go in there so I'm going to use a pair of tweezers to go ahead and shove the bearings into place to form a continuous ring around the race in there and the grease should hold them 
There, nine bearings inside there. Now I need to flip the wheel over and put the uh, bearings in the other side of the hub. Now I could probably pull this dust cap out of here, but uh, I don't want to because I could damage it. So I'm just going to need to squirt uh, grease down around the hub like this. Sometimes you can replace the little dust caps and sometimes you have a hard time finding them. So, you know, if you don't need to take them off, just don't take them off. And so now I'll insert the nine bearings over on this side. Okay, nine bearings in there. Now we need to reinstall the axle. I didn't take these parts off. A lot of times I'll take these parts off, clean them, and put them all back on. Um, but since I left these on, uh, it makes it a lot easier to put it all back together because I already have the spacing on this side. So when I get everything adjusted, I should have the spacing over on this side. If I had taken these off, then I would just, uh, again, I counted the, uh, the number of threads that were up here. So there was like about five threads to come up there. Put a little bit of grease onto the axle here and that will um, help keep it from uh, getting rusty or corroded in there and if I get a little bit on the threads here it just makes it a little easier to uh, get all the, the, the little uh, nuts and stuff on there. And this side came from the uh, drive side so I'll slide this up through there like this and I want to be careful not to knock any of those bearings out of there wipe off some of this excess grease there the first part that came off was uh, well actually the last part that came off was the cone so that goes on there first and I want to tighten the uh, cone down against uh, the bearings in there and then the next part that came off was this little uh, spacer there then this spacer there, and then the lock nut like that, and the little uh, rough parts there were facing out, so I'll get this on there like that. Now to make it a little easier to adjust everything here, uh, I put the bottom uh, lock nut or the drive side lock nut into a vise here. And so that way it'll hold that. So as I adjust the uh, cone up here, I can tighten that, tighten this, feel how it goes. I want to make sure that there's like no play, but that it turns smoothly and is not binding. And I can maybe loosen that up just a little bit. And then I can hold that in place. and then tighten this lock nut in against the cone then turn it see how it turns and then check for play and everything feels good but I'll take it out of the vise and try turning the axle and see how it feels it felt just a hair rough so what I'm going to do is loosen the lock nut here loosen the uh, cone just a little bit and then tighten the lock nut and we'll see how that feels and that feels much better now we need to reinstall the cassette so here's the free hub and there's going to be a wide notch on here so I want to find that wide notch and I have the cassette here and a lot of cassettes here at least Shimano ones there's like a little arrow right here um, and that arrow lines up with the little wide tooth part that uh, goes into that wide notch there a little spacer here again there's going to be a, a wide notch and there's the little arrow there so I get that lined up and then I have the small little uh, cog here and I'll slide that on and I've got the lock ring got my lock ring tool 
Tighten that in like that. Then I'm going to use my torque wrench here and on uh, uh, cassettes generally there'll be a number on the uh, lock ring here to tell you how to uh, torque, torque it down. 40 uh, nm uh, newton meters is the uh, pretty common so I'm going to torque this down to 40 newton meters. it like that. Now I want to reinstall the skewer. The uh, levers part goes onto the non-drive side. So I'll slide this up here, put the spring on, put the little uh, nut part on here like that. Okay I've got the wheel remounted. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. Uh, pedal it around here. I'll stop pedaling and it, the uh, free hub doesn't start the uh, cassette and chain and cranks all turning again. It stays nice and still the way it should. It's nice and quiet. And everything's nice and smooth. I can turn it back. And that is how to fix a sticky free hub for like a bike with a cassette. Anyway, I hope this helped. I hope you found this interesting. If you did, please click like. I always appreciate getting likes on my videos and it helps me out. Um, if you're not subscribed to my channel, click the big yellow button and subscribe to my channel and you'll see new videos as they come out and I'm always coming out with new uh, videos, especially having to do with bikes. And I all, I'm also on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. You can go over there and I post a lot of stuff over there. Uh, you can see the various things I'm working on. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.